Um, so this interests me. It, it, I called it postmodernism because you took some, you know, you took icons of mm -hmm. Western art and reinterpreted them. Tell me about reinterpreting Michelangelo's uh, uh, God and Adam. Um, well, as it started, I was really just playing around. I wanted to just juxtapose some European imagery with uh, African masks, and then I was deciding to try to play around with some masks from different cultures. But uh, in this one, I did end up using an African mask. Um, and then for the face of God, I was really thinking of what other objects I could replace the face with so that I would change the story even more. So I, I decided to make a television, the head of God. Um, and then the real question was, what do you put on the TV? I feel like uh, one of, I'm, I'm a liaison to some degree of, of art to a different generation or a different demographic. I think there's a lot of people who would appreciate art if it was presented to them in a way that didn't come off as pretentious and, and whatnot. And being a little more playful in some things, I think, playful yet serious. I decided to put a, a, a radio or boombox on uh, Adam's shoulder and that was really just playing around with, with images that, that fit before I was really adding content to the piece. And um, that felt like hip hop in the 80s to me. So I wanted to, to play off of what hip hop started out as or what hip hop was uh, originally seen to be. So I wanted to talk about the disconnect between what hip hop was and what it is. And for people who aren't involved or don't necessarily appreciate the culture of hip hop, they might think love and hip hop Atlanta actually has something to do with hip-hop. I don't think it has anything to do with hip-hop whatsoever. So how are these drawn? These are drawn... Uh... On, a, on a, a Wacom tablet uh, in Photoshop. I, I took the painting that I had done as my study, I photographed it, put it into the computer, and then uh, I made a few layers on top of it. One layer was all black, and I would draw it with just a pencil, a black layer. Another layer was all white, and then I put a gray background behind them. Uh -huh. So a great middle ground let me have shadows and highlights to really kind of add a lot more depth to the piece. You know what's amazing? This looks just like a live drawing. I mean, it really does. It looks like you could smudge it if you touched it. I was, I was hoping for that, that effect. Uh -huh. um, so here's a perfectly unfair thing. Mm -hmm. I come to a, an Iowa Scott show and I'm looking at the drawings and I can't help but search for John Scott. Okay. In there, who was John Scott? Why would I be? Uh, why would I be hunting for John? That Scott? was that was my dad, and just an amazing artist. I, I'm sure I'm biased in saying so, but greatest artist I've met. Um, incredible teacher, just a really giving person, and he was always trying to make people question what they understood of something and offer new information. That was that was one of the things that he was into. I see these rays of color. Mm -hmm. going through your otherwise uh, black and white canvases. And that's where I see uh, John Scott, that, that little flourish of modernism going on. Uh, is that fair? I, th I think so. I think so. The technique is definitely something that I got more from him than from anybody else. Um, but, uh, these little lines going through there, they're in the small studies as well. They represent bullets. Um, it's, oh, is that right? They represent bullets. It's my way of dealing with the violence in the city without beating you over the head with the violence in the city. So I wanted them to be kind of suggested, not really literal. 